Hello, everybody. would like to welcome you for uh, Telerad uh, 5 gigahertz unlic uh, unlicensed LTE webinar. Uh, let's give it a few minutes for everybody else to join in, and we will start shortly. Good morning, everybody. We're still seeing people joining in, so we're going to give a, another minute uh, or, two, or two, and uh, we will start promptly. Okay, I think we can start. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Alex Frelichman. Uh, I'm VP of Sales for Telerad Networks. I would like to introduce our team. Uh, Ishai Amsterdamer, he's our GM uh, for Fixed Wireless Broadband Group. Uh, Bernie Weisenberg, uh, he's our Director of Sales and joined our team about a month ago. Um, and Ter Terence Sipperly, uh, she is our director of marketing, so she's the soul of our group, making sure that things are rolling and happening and on schedule and so on. So um, would like to welcome you uh, uh, and appreciate your time that you're going to spend with us for the next you know, 40 minutes or so. Uh, we'll try to go through the slides. Uh, your lines are on mute. Uh, please feel free to send your questions. Uh, we will try to answer them as as they come in, uh, or as well as we're going to leave uh, Q&A uh, time slot at the end of the presentation to be able to answer them later. Um, on that note, let's start. So, unlicensed LTE. Uh, many of you probably heard of Telrad. Some of you are already using it. Uh, I do recognize some of our current customers. Um, uh, through the through the history, uh, you know, Telrad being you know, proponent and and uh, of fixed wireless broadband in fixed wireless broadband space, uh, we historically been targeting ourselves in lightly licensed and and and, and exclusive use license. Uh, not long ago, we introduced 5 gigahertz unlicensed product. It's something new to us, uh, but it's built around the same LTE platform, same software. So, um, as 
the product builds momentum we would like to share the news what exactly means uh, our vision uh, for for a for a total broadband access as far as how do you achieve maximum peak speeds how you combine frequency bands advantages uh, as well as we'll, at the end of the presentation we'll go over a few case studies with our existing customers that already been implementing unlicensed uh, LTE on their networks. So unparalleled solution um, for Telrad, it's really uh, a vision. Uh, it's uh, you know, we we see LTE as a predominant one of the best technologies of delivering data from point A to point B. Uh, it's very efficient way. It has uh, it has. You know, phenomenal latencies. It can accommodate a lot of customers. It has uh, resilience with uh, inter uh, you know, a really good interference rejection. Uh, it allows us to uh, support multiple carriers, non-contiguous carriers, which become very important in unlicensed frequency bands because you, know, you see multiple solutions that, that say, yeah, we can do 300 meg, we can do you know, 500 meg, 600, and so on. But you do need you know, 40 megahertz of spectrum, 80 megahertz of spectrum. And often it's a challenge. I mean, where do you find a chunk that is 40 megahertz wide, that is clean chunk? And uh, that's where the LTE comes in with really good story. So obviously uh, you get better link budget. So link budget results in more customers served, further distance. Uh, you get non line of sight with LTE, something that you, that you don't see with other uh, uh unlicensed unlicensed technologies uh, so that means that you don't have to put towers as often uh so each base station can serve and accommodate more customers and it's a carrier great solution it's an lte uh, and everybody that knows telrad uh, can relate to that it's a, it's a piece of hardware when you, you hold in your hands it it's substantial you feel it was properly designed and uh, obviously everything around it, the software, the quality of service. And our you know, most important part is really our scheduler. It's something that we uh, that took years to perfect. Uh, and uh, every LTE base station is built around our software-defined radio that incorporates our you know, proprietary scheduler that is... Uh, unique to Telerad and that really allows us to accommodate more customers uh, within the same amount of resources. So in a nutshell, we you know, technology is built for performance to serve more customers and uh, to reduce your total cost of ownership. This is where Telerad comes in with very strong messaging. Um, Ishai, uh, do you want to uh, talk a little bit more about the LT in the box? Yeah, so thank you, Alex. So Terod introduced the concept in order to minimize uh, the component in the solution as a LT in a box. LT in a box is it's also in the 3.5, but even more in the 5 gigahertz when combining the EPC inside, uh, inside the box, creating a ad hoc network and the ability to de deploy almost a private LTE network on a single sector. So every sector by itself can become a private LTE network in five gigahertz. Uh, so that uh, is, I would say, is a major change in, in comparison to other solutions that rec does require external EPC or a software EPC. This EPC, it's a, it's a great piece of hardware that supports all the performance, everything, because it's built on a unique technology that's, that will deliver the maximum throughput with uh, the number of subscribers that we are we designed the system for it. <clears throat> and in the end-to-end -end system, if you're looking at it, we didn't end at that. So the breeze view, and to the one we're using breeze view in 3.5 or 2.5, they will see that we added in the last few months uh, or the last year additional capabilities like the CPE view, like other stuff that provide us an holistic overview of the network. In many cases, most of the times the information is distributed across many components of the LTE network, whether it's the MME, HSS, the e -Node B, uh, the CPE. So by 
doing that, we are enabling to get a single report that's showing the complete UE KPI and the link capabilities for that for that UE. So everything comes as an holistic picture under the same management platform, under the same solution. That combined with the CPA 12,000 U, which is designed for unlicensed, can support two carriers, downlink and two carrier uplinks. All that provide a, a great solution for, I would say, five gigahertz and private LTE networks. Yep, thank you, Shai. So uh, to 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 supplement to what what Ishai was talking about the the embedded EPC is it's a nuance where uh, EPC is your Ethernet termination point. If uh, is your Ethernet termination point, and that means that uh, that when you're plugging in internet, <laughs> in the simpler words, you know you're plugging in, and it, it goes into the EPC. This is so. Uh, uh, if if you separate EPC into central location, then you have to be concerned about the backhaul, the connectivity between the base base uh, base station, uh, the ENLB, and the central located EPC. So, and that's the beauty part of Telerad is we were able to merge those two in one box, and thus bringing architecturally concept of LTE, deploying LTE networks, architecturally very similar to deploying traditional you know, license, I mean, traditional uh, proprietary or standard-based uh, systems. So uh, uh, so let's talk a little bit about our Breeze U100. Um, it's built, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's built around the same software-defined radio, same baseband, uh, 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 obviously different radio portion, uh, but uh, everybody that knows Telerad knows that we do spend a lot of time around our radios to make sure that they are uh, they reject interference very well. They're friendly uh, to make sure that we uh, can support extra dB lower noise floor uh, support uh, uh, connections with uh, uh, lower CINRs. Uh, all that results in again. Connections can go further, better near non-line of sight performance, thus supporting more customers per each individual unit. So uh, our five gigahertz system comes in two flavors: connectorized uh, and integrated. And connectorized obviously looks very similar to our Compact 1000 CBRS system, three gig system. It, in fact, it looks identical. So obviously you. Uh, it, it uses identical chassis, so obviously you have to be con you, know, you have to be aware that this is a, a you, it's a separate NEG48 power. It means that it comes with a gigi Ethernet. You have an option of fiber connectivity. Uh, it means that uh, just like any other Telerad LTE system, it will support 5, 10, 15 megahertz channels, double up with you know, carrier aggregation. So total 40 megahertz can get you it can get you about 200 megabits per second. And uh, and obviously embedded EPC. And what's probably another most important part is LTE is a layer three transport. Everything is routed. So uh, what do you do when you need to deliver public IP address to a user when you have a routed network? So uh, in case of Telrad, uh, we natively support that service. And we don't just natively support layer two. We also support quality of service within layer two traffic as well. So you don't have to do double nating, for example, if you're offering voice um, and, and so on. So it's, uh, um, it's, it's, it, it's, it's quite capable thought through feature set that, uh, you know, that takes, um, takes, um, a know-how uh, and capability to integrate everything in under one software and and hardware umbrella. Um, one of the visions that uh, uh, and I, I will have Fishai talk a little bit more about that. We have a separate slide. Is really our vision for the future, where we see that one uh, frequency does not get you there. It's never one frequency. Uh, 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 you can never get maximum capacity, maximum throughput, uh, uh, and accommodate more customers if you use one frequency band solution. So we see uh, a total 
a LTA system as, as a multi-band system. So where you have customers that are served by CBRS, uh, via CBRS frequency bands, uh, you have customers that are served via unlicensed frequency bands. And what we really see is, uh, uh, is in order for you to give you total complete solution is ability to combine both and not just combine to coexist. It's really to, for them to be used as one system delivering service over two different frequency bands at the same time. And uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we will spend a little bit more time talking about it and, uh, uh, and I would like Ishai to speak up about that. So uh, one of the important parts uh, about uh, about uh, unlicensed frequency band is obviously noise, is interference. And what do you do about it? Spectrum analyzer. Uh, so we have a built-in capability for spectrum analyzer. Um, and uh, uh, Isha, if you don't mind, can you speak up a little bit more about uh, uh, about uh, that feature? All right. Thanks, Alex. So the spectrum analyzer that uh, Terra develop is uh, we have two modes to that spectrum analyzer. We have a runtime, which I call it the AKG of the system. So all the time during the operation of the device, every frame, every transmit, every receive, we are collecting the information on the spectrum and how it looks like. And in the LTE, you have the frame is, or the, the frame is in the air, it's uh, built as of RBs. And let's say that you have one hour in RBs in 20 megahertz channel, so we can, indicate on which RB we have that interference and that's also translate to an algorithm that allows us to scheduling in a better efficiency. So this is in the real time happen and we show few example we can show the noise and we can show also the maximum hold. The maximum hold is a very important information because it shows you always what was the maximum level of interference that was captured during that uh, that uh, during that entire time of run. And that can go over each of the antennas of the device, whether we have, you're working in configuration of two by two, four by four, each antenna is in separate and also calculated uh, together. Besides of that, we have what we call an offline spectrum analyzer that allow you to scan all the five gigahertz uh, spectrum and try to locate uh, the best suitable or less noisier spectrum frequency slices that are available. So those two combines, whether in maintenance windows or in the real time, those provide provide an holistic overview of the frequency for five gigahertz. I would say that another key important part of it is that it's not a spectrum analyzer that you go with and you know, and just do it in the area of the base station. It's exactly what the base station sees because it's the base station itself. So it's in that azimuth, in that height, in that tilt, the exact noise that is being captured. So it's not coming from a tool nearby the base station that, that shows the interference, though it's good, but this is, uh, I would say, more accurate as it shows everything that uh, required in that level. Yeah, and because LTE decouples uplink from the downlink, what you can also uh, you know, look at the similar results uh, in, in, in both directions independently. And that also becomes very important because often you will hear complaints from our customers that uh, you, they, have, they may have a good downlink, but then CP drops. And a lot of it because of the uplink channel maybe uh, might not necessarily be the most optimal one and needs to be optimized, or maybe there is another CPE that is too noisy near that customer premise, uh, that, 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 that uh, CPE that with a bad signal. Uh, so it, it's, it, in other words, just like any other item within Telred's portfolio, Spectrum Analyzer becomes uh, an important troubleshooting tool to make sure that you maximize you calibrate your network to its best performance and you maximize the uptime and you give best possible level of services. Uh, to That also brings us to the next point. LTE natively, since concept comes from 3GPP, the mobile carriers, uh, in, in LTE world, subscriber units natively do not 
report quality of the signal. Uh, what seems to be very natural and organic in any Wi-Fi based or proprietary systems today, uh, in LTE this information is simply not available. So uh, to uh, and it comes from philosophical approach where carriers really care about coverage, not necessarily capacity, as a priority number one. They can build enough capacity, but uh, as a secondary uh, kind of a application. Um, for us, capacity is uh, is the primary concern because you don't you, know, you don't move the house very often, and expectations from end users, from customers, if you sell them 10 meg or 20 meg. They, yeah, you know, when they do speed tests, they would like to see a 20 meg most of the times, at least. Um, uh, so to do that, we have to go and get this information. But the problem is, this information is not located in one place. It's spread between subscriber units, EPC, base station, and again, downlink decoupled from uplink, uh, and that makes things complex. But uh, with, within our BreezeView tool, we've incorporated ACS function. And that gives us this holistic view where we can pull the stats from the network and understand if there is a bad apple. Uh, and maybe we have to send, you have to send an engineer uh, installer to realign the CPE. Maybe you have to adjust the package from, you know, from higher end to a little bit lower end, so it would not be impacting sector very much. Maybe uh, you have to, uh, you know, force and lock the CPE for a particular sector, so that device wouldn't be jumping, roaming through and jumping to another base station where that RF balance changes. So, um, so that becomes again just like spectrum analyzer, another important you know, node and element to, be, to make sure that you build balanced network to make sure that you can support more customers with, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, fewer base stations. Um, moving Just to the next... comment, Alex, on, yes, absolutely. on that slide, if you may. It, we developed a complete installation uh, parameter guidelines based on this tool. And this tool allows you, for example, if you see that there is a difference between the SNRs level on the ports, on port one or port two of the CPE, then one can say, okay, with a, with such a gap, let's say for a 4 dB gap between on the SNR levels or CNR level, then we know that MIMO will not work that great or other things will not work uh, perfect. So that gives us a lot of information that combined with the installation guideline that's provided to our support portal gives a better and uh, further recommendation what to do in case you encounter and how to improve your installation. Thank you, Shai. Um, yep. So, um, um, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, advantages and benefits uh, of the of the unlicensed LTE system. Uh, I'll skip after a few. Uh, clicks to make sure that all the information is right in front of us. Uh, so um, LTE, as you know, it's a standard-based uh, protocol uh, and uh, it, 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 it has some advantages, obviously, and disadvantages uh, since it built for mobility. So uh, then you can take it as a baseline and figure out, okay, what features really uh, important to us on a fixed wireless network and what features may be less important um, uh, and how do we make best out of it and so so when we look at LTE we don't look at okay I'm responsible only for the infrastructure and you're responsible only for the CPEs and then someone else is responsible for the EPC and let the integrator integrate and hope that things gonna work. And then when uh, problems start, finger pointing starts. So uh, all of us been there. Uh, and unfortunately, this is the reality of uh, you know when you start marrying multiple systems from multiple brands uh, together. So we see uh, broadband. Uh, you know, we see LTE system in more holistic way where one vendor takes ownership from the beginning to the end. Same thing applies to the CBRS, which this presentation is not about, but 
there are some nuances that come with CBRS, and uh, when you deal with one vendor solution uh, from the from A to Z, uh, uh, it, it allows us to to go dive deep and troubleshoot and identify the issues and so on. Same thing applies with this, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, a little bit about the scheduler. Uh, some of the interference mitigation mechanisms that we've implemented with the uh, uh, with the uh, uh, I'm blanking out on the terminology, Shai. <laughs> Frequency dynamic sch scheduler. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, it, 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 you have to take into account which CPE, what it has to do at any given time to make sure to make sure that if there is an interferer with that device, you start allocating resource blocks away from the noise. So it uh, it can get pretty complicated. Um, so, uh, so so it it's all built around producing a complete solution with that tuned for best possible performance. It's built around mature radio platform. Uh, our LTE is 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 uh, we call it mature system, and we've been shipping it since 2015. Uh, yeah, it took us a couple of years to 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 make sure that the software is ready and and stable and optimized. And so when we introduced five gigahertz, obviously it did not have to go through all the development cycles since we already had a very robust uh, software version. So uh, so it is a mature system. So we are not gambling with your choices. Uh, you know exactly what you are stepping into. And, uh, and I will okay. add, Alex, yeah, uh, I just add that you know the best interference mitigation approach is avoid the interference. And the care aggregation, and especially the non-contingent channels with care aggregation, that allow additional layers of uh, interference mitigation protection. It it can be that one of the channels, let's say that in all the frequency that is available, only one slice can be non-interference, but still there is some data that can be taken out from the interference uh, channel. So by combining them, by combining two channels, even if one is interfered, the other one is not, it still provides uh, a best solution in terms of interference mitigation. Ishai, can you talk a little bit more about uh, the multiple deployment scenarios, please? Yes. So Terra developed throughout the years uh, about six deployment uh, topologies. In the case of the five gigahertz, uh, we are recommending four out of them, which are yielding what we believe the most uh, cost-effective result. And, and they're coming on the, on, on the area of the Compact 1000 and then the Breezy 100. Those are two different platforms, both designed to, for a different, uh, I would say, a different uh, type of deployment. For example, number one. Number one is the typical case where you have two sector, two dual sector beaming to a different topographies or different geographical areas from the same base station. So essentially the same base station, same hardware become two different base station. And that's allow us to split the capacity into two main areas. So, and that in turn, Instead of buying two sectors or two base station, you just want to buy base station, uh, sorry, one base station, and, and that should be good enough in, in the cases that you have, let's say, 10 subscribers here and 10 subscribers in the other uh, sector. So instead of using care aggregation, a dual sector will be used. We also have the ones working with four by four. By four. So in a single, let's say you want to work 20 megahertz on a single geographical area, so TM4 and TM8 in the LTE give a mathematical beamforming, which will give some somewhere between 3 to 6 uh, dB gain, which is a lot. It's a lot in the 3.5 and certainly in, in the 5 gigahertz, uh, it's quite a bit. Then we have the care aggregation. This is uh, the maximum peak rate uh, that's available combining 20 plus 20 megahertz channel, yielding capacity of a 40 megahertz channel, into a single CPE. And this is the difference between mode number three and number one. Here it's a peak throughput for a single UE, and here it's a capacity for the entire sector that is optimized to be 200 megabit per second. 
So different way to speed the 200 megabit per second. Then later on this year, and I mean later on this year, probably around uh, July, August, we will start uh, uh, field trials with what we call the chaining concept. Uh, let's assume that you have a CBRS running in the DPA zone near the coastal area. We augment that with five gigahertz. In case of CBRS incumbent activity, there will be a failover mechanism to five gigahertz. In normal situation, CBRS not in the coastal area, you want to, and you are a PAL, you want to use 20 megahertz from CBRS, you can use additional 20 megahertz from five gigahertz augmenting that. So that's allow you even better reuse of the frequency, even though CBRS allow more frequency, still it's limited. And by augmenting it with additional 20 megahertz coming from a five gigahertz, it still allows the maximum peak per user combining with two different, uh, two different boxes that will do the same. So investment that will come today in the infrastructure will lead later on also additional uh, use case and, and business justification. Yep, thank you. So that leads us to, uh, we are almost at the end of the presentation. I want to talk a little bit about a few case studies without diving deep uh, into the details. Um, if you guys are interested to discuss further or talk to our existing customers that have deployed systems, don't hesitate. Uh, let us know. We will make the introductions. Our customers generally are very happy to share the successes. And uh, we're going to have a blend uh, of, of a few case studies, some domestic, some international. So um, obviously, as you can imagine, we do have customers in over 100 countries. So. Um, uh, so first case study is a company called Ursius. Um, so Ishai, do you want to uh, talk a little bit more about these guys and I'll, I'll take care of the other two. All right. So Ursius, they're our partner in Australia for the ANZ region. And they were looking mainly uh, to use 5 gigahertz in an online of site. This is, was their most important uh, use case uh, because they're looking for I would say industrial application, mining, and, uh, and another, I would say industrial application that will result in, in online of site. And this was their main challenge. So if you look, this is a kind of a, a building that they were using the CPE. So the base station is far away there, but the CPE is behind the, is behind the, the structure. And later on in the testing, they put actually the base station within the building and the building it's, it's also a metal. So it's also creating additional uh, level of uh, hardness uh, for the wireless signal and all, and they did all that in order to make sure that it will meet all the conditions that they will see in the industrial environment that are going to use the base station and the CPE. So all, overall, I would say all in all, they were very much uh, in favor of the LT in a box uh, approach it's minimize the minimize the cost of installation, minimize uh, the risk between the LTE components, and help them to deploy in the industrial area a telrod solution in five gigahertz. Awesome. So next key study is one of our existing customers, Mitko. Uh, these guys are located in, uh, in a number of states in Dakotas and uh, Minnesota and so on. Um, so they do use heavily our CBRS system and uh, with introduction of 5 gigahertz, uh, the, the, again, the total vision picture resonates with uh, Mitko's vision of delivering 100 by 20 services. Uh, in order for you to successfully deliver 100 by 20, you have to have 40 megahertz of uh, spectrum. And uh, in case of Telerad, it doesn't matter where, the, where those 40 megahertz come from. Those 20 can come from CBRS. The other 20 can come from 5 gigahertz. If it, you, know, it, you can do both, all 40 from CBRS or all 40 and uh, the rest of the 40 and 5. It doesn't matter how you mix and match. But the idea is that you can combine two systems and run it as one. Uh, resonance with these guys because at the end of the day, uh, when you're a cable operator, you can serve your customers within the cable footprint very well. But, but uh, you know, customers that are outside the edge, 
uh, can are, are underserved. Uh, so again, Telred concept resonate, resonated well with with Mitko and uh, it, it it does work. Uh, the dual band approach works very well for them. Uh, another customer of ours, uh, for, uh, uh, Visionary Broadband. Um, same thing. Uh, you needed technology that may be different from three gigahertz. It does have limitations, primarily in the amount of spectrum, amount of available frequency that's available. Uh, if you are in congested areas, CBRS is great. 150 megahertz is a lot, uh, but uh, again. Uh, there are going to be some limitations, and um, again, moving into the uh, uh, augmenting their CBRS coverage with five gigahertz gives uh, gives Visionary uh, a better uh, you know, a better way to serve their customers with more bandwidth. Um, on that note, on that note, uh, we're done with our slides. There are not that many questions. Um, question from Michael on LT mobile nomadic network how far can you place base stations so um, uh, so Michael so here's the here's the uh, the nuance about the mobility so when Telrad build the system around you know, fixed wireless access so if you are but being a LTE, if you are attached to a centralized evolved packet core, you do get benefits of handoffs, uh, uh, seamless handoffs from one base station to another base station. Now, the problem will really gonna boil down to client uh, customer premise equipment, the UEs. If UE is available in five gigahertz, that's question one. Question two, you have to be concerned about the reality of power levels, interference, and noise. If there is a use case to begin with. So um, Ishai, do you want to uh, compliment a little bit more uh, about the use case or uh, the mobility use case in five gigahertz? Yeah, so mainly in the industrial areas, what we see is that the uh, customers in mining, they want to put the base, the CPE on, let's say on a, on a big tractor or a big truck. And, and, you know, being some kind of nomadic or at least a, uh, it's, I would say it's not a high-speed boat, though we do have a use case with a high-speed boat that we said, you know, it it might work, and at the end it it, it did work to in in 90% of the cases it did work, and it was a phenomenal uh, use case of a speed boat combined with the with the helicopter uh, going around the you know the port of uh, Sydney, uh, the by boat racing, so. Mobility comes naturally uh, to the LTE environment, especially working with the external EPC. It will require from us to have an external EPC in, in that use case. And then we can support the mobility and the mobility will be between the sectors, will be between like, all the use cases that uh, that will come in 3.5, they will they will work in 2.5, they will work in, in five gigahertz. From protocol level and from LTE point of view, we haven't done anything uh, to impact that capability. So mobility will work. We are not the company for mobility, but it's worked for us. And we find we find our scheduler and all our algorithm toward the fixed wireless broadband. But it, we do support uh, the mobility, especially for, uh, I would say, uh, pedestrian, uh, nomadic, and uh, not uh, racing cars, but a normal driving 60, 60 miles uh, should work. Yeah. So, uh, Michael, just remember that your uh, your limiting factor is going to be lowest common denominator, and that's going to be the uplink power from the UE back to the base station. So, um, uh, so think of it Wi-Fi. I mean, ABGN. Uh, you can see the base station mile away, but a laptop can only transmit that far. Um, so, uh, and that's really going to be the limiting factor. LT is not any different. Again, you're limited by regulatory requirements of the country that you're going to be operating within. And if it's a handheld device, it's probably going to have maybe like 17 dBm. 
uh, I'm not sure what's what's going to be the total ARP for uh, for the USB dongle if there is one. So uh, or when it, one will be available. So there is no clear cut. Technically, it's it's possible. Distance will be questionable. It's going to be limited by your customer premise equipment. Yep. Um, uh, anything else? Uh, anybody else has any questions? Uh, okay, so that that's the question for the spacing, uh, Michael. So you're gonna have to space antennas far enough to make sure that 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 there is a there is adequate coverage based on the CPE. When you use outdoor CPE, you can go miles. When you have a handheld CPE, distance maybe 300 feet. <laughs> 500 feet. I don't know. It will depend on the actual customer premise equipment, how far it can shoot the data back. It's going to be further than Wi-Fi, but not necessarily uh, as far as you would be using an outdoor CPE with directional antenna. All right. Uh, on that note, um, let's wrap up. Uh, it's been about 40 minutes. We appreciate your time. Uh, thank you again. Any additional questions, please feel free to direct them to uh, to our teams, uh, to marketing at telred.com as well as sales-na for North America at telred.com. Uh, we are monitoring our, the emails, making sure that customers are responded promptly. Uh, and uh, if phone calls are needed, more than welcome. We are currently running a promotion, a high five promo, uh, available for our customers globally. Uh, that includes one base station, 20 customer premise equipment, uh, customer premise CBEs, CBEs, uh, customer premise devices. Uh, we are including free licensing for 4x4 and dual carrier as well as 20 EPC access uh, licenses. So that basically equates to about worth of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, roughly around $4,000 worth of savings. Uh, equipment is available for shipping. Uh, distributors have it on the shelf. So uh, uh, as I call it, zero lead times, essentially, just as much time you need for the shipping and process to order. So uh, any additional questions, we're here to, to, uh, to answer. And uh, thank you again for your time.